Hello everyone, my name is Aaron, I am the founder of Dragon Wrath Innovations, and welcome to my YouTube debut. The reason I am making this video is to demonstrate a very cool machining practice. Um, the basic idea is to use a mill with a piece of stock in the tool holder and a lathe tool in the vise, which allows you to perform turning operations using the mill and this is particularly beneficial with CNC mills and when you don't have access to a CNC lathe. So uh, there are several videos already out there about doing this but none that really go into detail of how it's done so I thought I'd make a video and hopefully folks can learn and uh, be able to take advantage of this technique themselves when they're in a bind and they really don't have much other choice to do what it is they're trying to do so I'm going to get right into it. Uh, as you can see, I am designing a simple part, kind of a chess piece looking part in order to uh, demonstrate the technique. So I sketched it out and then used Revolve as a means to extrude it. And by the way, I am running Autodesk Fusion 360 software. Uh, it is great. It is very user friendly and uh, very intuitive and having the integrated cam is something that uh, you just cannot beat. So the part is designed and now I'm moving into the stock setup for the cam. Um, I don't like to use too much stock overhang just in general. I like to minimize the size of the stock I use whether it's milling or turning just because I um, don't like the idea of just getting big pieces of stock and not using them for everything they're worth. Um, so I only do about a ten thousandths overhang on the end of the stock. You definitely want enough, but uh, especially with CNC, but you know, I mean, you don't want to be wasteful. I'm going about the tool pass right now. Um, as you can see, just simple turning operations. And the cool thing is that the X and Z axis both directly correlate between a mill and a lathe's G-code. So as long as you don't use any... Um, very lathe specific G codes. For instance, constant surface speed. That's not something you're going to be able to do with a milling machine's controller, unless it's some kind of crazy milling machine. But uh, you just want to use your standard spindle speed and inch per minute feed rates. Yeah, that will allow you to run lathe post lathe G code in a mill, which is very nice. You'll need to play around a little bit to get the the stock set up in your cam program to direct to translate correctly into the mill but um, it will work as you can as you're about to see in a few minutes uh, so I have it set up and I'm just going to run a quick simulation to see how the toolpath is gonna go So it seems to be, yeah, it seems like it ran very well. Nice finishing pass. Um, one thing I'm realizing is that it is still set at the default step over, uh, which is 40 thousandths, and I'm not too keen on taking such an aggressive step over with no tail stock, and uh, this method doesn't allow for a tail stock, which is its biggest downfall. But like I said, it's something you'll use when you really don't have any other choice, when you don't have access to a lathe. But um, so I'm gonna. I like to set it to ten thousandths for the step over, um, fifteen hundred RPM spindle speed, and a uh, ten ten inch per minute feed rate. You can you can step up from there, but that's a pretty good place to start without getting yourself into too much trouble. You don't want to start uh, pushing the limits of your mill's rigidity trying to do this because your finish will get very very ugly very quick. Um, but as you can see, it's uh, yeah the tool path is written. Yeah, much shallower steps. Yeah, so it's looking like it's going to do very well. Um, so that's it for my narrative. I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut the part and add that video. And I hope you enjoyed. And hopefully if you learned something, maybe you leave me a like. And I'll see you next time.